How y'all doing? Hey, do y'all want to go check out a vaudeville house? You ever heard of one? It's a theater. This one's built in 1919. Hey, if y'all want to go check it out, don't go nowhere. Hey, while we're on our ride down to the theater, be sure and hit that like and subscribe button down below and don't forget to ring that bell icon so you'll be notified every time we release a new video. We're still working in here uh, with volunteers and when you see it, you'll see there's a lot to be done. Uh, I've got some pictures in here, some before and after pictures. The marquee is not original to the building. Uh, but when we've, when we've been, some of us have been at this for 25 <laughs> years, uh, when the uh, city acquired it in uh, about 1994 or 6, one or the other, uh, before that it had always been privately owned and in its heyday and for many years the same family owned it. Mm. But at, with the advent of television and you know better highways, so it's easy to get to Wichita Falls or Vernon to mm -hmm. a bigger, bigger moving house. Uh, the and and Electra's population dwindled. Uh, this got to be, an, it wasn't profitable anymore, and so it had sat empty for probably 15, 20 years. I mean, unused, with a bad roof. The owner didn't fix the roof. And so we've spent now years trying to put it back together from water damage, from having those years it had a bad roof. But I've got a picture of, the, of it with the original uh, front before the marquee went on. But let me give you this, because this is okay. how you find me. Okay. <laughs> it's on the back. Gotcha. And, uh, but y'all come on in. Uh, I wanted to show you this photograph. This is old and fuzzy, but that's what that looked like out front before that marquee went on. And when we, you know, like as I said, when we really started working on it in earnest, we talked to some of the old timers in town, asking them. We couldn't find anybody that remembered it without the marquee. So we're assuming from photographs that had cars in them that the marquee, mm. the marquee went up in probably the, the 30s. Uh, the, this was an op, built as an opera house, and it was a thousand seat theater, <laughs> if you can believe that. All balcony, loges, bottom floor. But those original seats, of course, were about this wide, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, really close together. The rows were really close together. And uh, so we have, on the, the main floor, we have 281 seats, and they're wow. quite comfortable, and so, but, in the beginning, it was a thousand seat theater because it had a balcony. And when you came through these doors, there was a partition that we think may have just been a curtain uh, that screened the strut. You know, when you walked in, you mm -hmm. couldn't see the stage. So that was all closed. And uh, they made the house comfortable. We took the stairwell down. We hope to put it back someday. But the truth is, it wouldn't go to anything because uh -huh. everything up there is. <coughs> rotted and bad, you know, that it all have to be rebuilt for it to have any real use. So that's, we'll do that someday, but that's why we'll always. Oh, I was going to show you the pictures of, of the art. Uh, here is a picture, an, an old picture. Uh, people on the stage, and you see the, the shape of the arch. Mm -hmm. Well, and it looks like that. Uh, this was probably early 30s, and amazingly, some of these backdrops still exist. Mm -hmm. We have them in the house. That big tall frame thing with the slash mm -hmm. across the top of it, that may be one of them. I'm, I'm not certain, they're, but they're every bit that tall. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're really high. So, but as an, as an opera house, of course, this had a working stage, and, you know, a pin rail and a fly, you know, you could work things mm -hmm. from up above. I heard that remark, Costello. I'll have you know my neck is not long. Oh, no. Last time I saw a neck like that, a jockey was bending over it. <laughs> oh, I was going to show you what it looked like before we started to work. That's what it looked like. Uh, you see, that's dated. And this was done in the 50s for a, to fit a cinemascope screen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the screen got so big and there was nothing live going on in here. 
at that point. It was a commercial movie house and making money, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. So they did that. They did some remodeling and they pulled out just the main floor of those original seats and put in a little bit better seat, you know, one that would automatically mm -hmm. come up. Uh, and the backs were wood, but the seat had, actually had some padding in it. But uh, that's what that looked like all my growing up years. Uh, nobody paid any attention to it because when we came in here, it was dark because we were going to a movie. Mm -hmm. And But that's what that looked like until we did cobbled together enough money to match a grant that did the restoration of the arch. And so that's, this, this finished uh, the summer of 2016. So before 2016, it looked like that. And <laughs> stuff was beginning to fall on, you know, fall mm -hmm. on the floor. Mm. But uh, it, this is the railing, and we'll walk down there, but it actually has an orchestra pit and uh, a big basement where the air uh, heating and cooling mm -hmm. <laughs> in 1920, mm -hmm. uh, all of that happened. And uh, then dressing rooms on both sides of the stage. So let's go on up. Here is the orchestra pit. And I think that first picture I showed, you, know, you can see a piano in it. Uh, but this was a band performance of some kind. KELT were the call letters of a radio station in Electra. Wow, uh, they had a radio yeah, station? Yeah, we had a radio station here probably till about 1955, something like that. Yeah. Uh, the graffiti is, has been here many, many years. Uh, I can recognize occasionally some of the names, people that are older than I am, but we, didn't, we haven't covered up any graffiti, so. <laughs> but, these would have been, at one time, uh, the backs of dressing room walls because the configuration on the stage was like this one. Mm -hmm. And you see the pin rail up top, it's got the sticks sticking down in it, and that's how you control the ropes that raise and lower everything. Mm -hmm. Somebody is smoking you! Woo! How dare you compare me to a horse! Why, I have an aristocratic face. My grandfather was a count. You're right, Count Fleet. <laughs> Kenneth, are you going to stand there and let Costello compare me to a horse? Nay, nay. Um, that was a very snappy part. Costello, with your appearance, you're a fine one to talk about. Was the only one that went all the way into the basement and up to the the ceiling that we we had the the tin uh, sandblasted and and painted you know, to install underneath the balcony there. Because before we did that work, it was so ratty. It was like the ceiling up here. You could stand underneath it, and you could see all the way up to this ratty ceiling <laughs> up here. So, you may recognize our house lights as basketball court lights. Yeah, they were discarded in, by the school district and given to us. And actually, there was method in our madness we hung them at a height, so you really don't notice that ceiling. <laughs> and they're so bright, you know. Mm -hmm. But we had to have a way to work in here. Right, and, uh, right. So that was an early thing that we got done. Uh, there's the CinemaScope screen. It's still up there. It is heavy. Now, it is chained up there. The other things that you see dangling are, you know, are on ropes and things. Mm -hmm. but like the string of lights, you know, that's right. not on chains. It doesn't weigh a whole lot. We have one actual dressing room left. And uh, it's not easy getting up there, but it, I mean, other than stuff on the stairs and all that, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's hard to get up there because we've got stuff everywhere. But it's, the, you can see where we've reinforced stairs. Mm -hmm. If you want to go into that dressing room, it has a light in it, and it's got a mirror on the wall. And... Mm. You can see in here now.
Actually got to be in a room with a star on the door. <laughs> we got a hand around here. See, these are supports we've added. Mm -hmm. Stage floor supports, and we've got to do that on that whole end over there. But we had to get to bedrock to do it. This chimney, um, I'm not quite sure that worked, but up on the front, up above the marquee, there was and it, it's still up there on the inside. A uh, great, huge thing, you know, bigger than my stretch. Wow. I mean, I, I'm thinking, and there's a concrete V thing, V shape there that was under the wooden floor. You can see the end of it down here. It's got a plank up there up above it. And the water table in Electra, it, if you haven't discovered this already, it's pretty high. And this building was built with that hole over there in it, the sump, and a pump in it to pump the water out of the basement. Hmm. Well, uh, that's all well and good, except for those, those 20 years it sat here with a bad roof and raining in and nobody mm -hmm. been here right. taking care of that. And so this basement sat full of water for years. Along about in there, I don't know the exact, the exact dimensions of it, but. Uh, we tore out a brick furnace wall, you know, I mean, there was a furnace there, and we tore that out, and, because we thought that was not anything we would ever use. Mm. And we may, at some point, have to actually do another sump over on the other side, uh, just to make sure we keep this place dry. Because when you don't, you know, you're even mm -hmm. since we've done that, the, at the bottoms, you can see what, what water do, does to mm -hmm. This handrail is useless, but the pipes are stable and good. Okay. It's probably not safe to go in further than that. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, you can see the boxes. Those would have been the most expensive seats in the house, except that there were uh, two little uh, openings down here that we're not sure whether they ever had seats in them. In the 50s, they had swamp coolers in them. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't ever know whether they actually was, that was seating or whether they just used it on the stove side for hot mm -hmm. storage. That's a little, little drop down thing that you see uh, that where we've done the Tin, re restore the tin tile, and we think that was probably a projection booth, but we don't, maybe for a long time ago, and then the big cameras were up in here. Oh, yeah. And we still have the two old carbon arc projection, projectors. Where does that go? Just out? That Oh, wow. The whole, oh, I see, okay. But you can see charred wood. And this was probably back in the, maybe the 70s, the late 70s, as well. It was, it had sat vacant for so long. And mm -hmm. So you can see the result of that. Mm -hmm. the, you know, concerts and things that would mm -hmm. raise some money. Well, so this is our last ditch effort. There are places for 100 candles on this cake. Oh. And so for a donation, a birthday donation to the grand, you can have a tag that gives you credit for doing that, you know, that, and it lights a candle on the cake. I'm sitting out here editing the video from our trip yesterday to the Grand Theater in Electra, Texas, and realized I either didn't record an ending or I lost the last clip, I'm not really sure. If you find yourself on 287 between Wichita Falls and Vernon, Texas, and you're into looking at old buildings like the Grand Theater in Electra, Texas, y'all stop off and check it out. There's tours like we did yesterday available from 10 a.m. till noon on most of the Fridays. I will leave the lady's name and her phone number down in the description below so y'all can give her a call.
and uh, see if she's available to show y'all around and tell y'all what's going on there. Y'all can check it out. In the meantime, y'all keep on keeping on, and we'll see y'all down the road. Bye.